Hey guys, my name is Evan and welcome to Country View Acres. So today I've started a brand new project, a new fencing project, and I'm trying to fence in this area over here so that we can move our feeder steers into this area because the pasture they're in isn't quite big enough and they pretty much ate all the grass up already. So the first thing I did today was I laid out exactly where I wanted the fence to go and I ended up using these fiberglass fence posts. So I'm able to just stick these into the ground Anywhere there's a corner post, um, anywhere the fence might turn, and anywhere maybe a gate opening would be. And then I could adjust these until everything was exactly the way I wanted it. And I've got everything laid out, I think, ideally the way I want. So I've went ahead, I've taken this one out, and I went ahead and I've put our first wooden post in. So we got our first wooden fence post set. I think I've got four or five more of these to pull out and replace with wooden posts and then we'll have the rough perimeter of the fence complete. All right, I got an eight foot fence post. I'm shooting for 34 inches in the ground and 58 inches above the ground. So I am putting these in plumb and then I'm also just packing the dirt back down in the hole with the tamper. It's the cheapest way to do fence posts. It's a lot more expensive to use concrete and good packed dirt works just as good. So in between these two posts, I need a 16 foot opening here so that I can have a gate. And I'm pretty close. Let me make sure this is all level. We'll check it again. All right, so right there is level. I'm way too close now. I'm two inches off. So I'm gonna have to cut the bottom of that hole so I can shift this post over just a little bit. Cause this dimension is pretty critical to get a gate to work here. Oh, there's a piece of concrete in the ground. 
there's a piece of concrete. I'm surprised we didn't hit more than that because there used to be a barn that sat right here and I was afraid I'd get into maybe a piece of the foundation if it was still in there. But that's the worst we hit, that's not bad. I think it must be right on the edge of the foundation. All right, let's check it. It's level that way. It's level that way. Now, hopefully it's the right width or hopefully it's a little bit wider. I'd rather be wide than short. All right. Well, we're about a half inch short, so I think I can still get that to work. Instead of putting the hinges here on the post, I can actually rotate them around onto the side a little bit, and I'll be able to get my clearance. So I have a, a video series on when we fenced in the pasture out here connected to the barnyard where we got our steers in now. And uh, I'll put a link to that in the description below, but it definitely has a lot of information in there on building the braces and stretching the fence. So I know there's a lot cheaper ways that you can build a fence, but the reason I do the, the things that I do is because I work a full-time job and I've got extra money right now. So while we have the extra income, I can go ahead and take that extra money and I can put it into the infrastructure and try to build things up as, better, as best as I can and try to build them to last. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind the way I do this is while I have the extra money, might as well do it right the first time. Now, later on, I may want to do things cheaper once I quit my job, and then we will probably do a totally different way of building a fence. But there's several ways you can build a fence. You can definitely build it a lot cheaper than the way I do it. But hopefully, you know, years down the road, when I don't have a job and I'm just doing this in my retirement, the fences are built well enough that they'll, they'll last several years. I won't have a bunch of repairs to do to the fence and uh, things will just be a lot easier is what I'm hoping. I'm, I'm hoping to put the work in now so it'll be easier later. There's another piece of concrete right there. Luckily my rock pile's not too far away. So I actually took vacation this week. I, I got so much stuff on my plate to do lately that um, I felt like I was getting so far behind. So I took a week of vacation this week, hopefully to catch up around here and hopefully get a pretty good jump start on this fence. So the 16 foot gate that goes between these two posts right here, that is perfectly in line with the gate of the barnyard. So the idea is you can open up both of the gates Maybe we can use a couple stock panels as well on this other side and we can make a little bit of an alley and we can transfer the steers from that pasture over to this area that we're fencing in. So as I've been putting in these fence posts, I've tried to keep them seven feet from the edge of the driveway. So with seven feet here, that still gives me plenty of room to be able to pull off and park a vehicle on the side of the road. And then if I want to come back later and put in a shallow ditch. Now I'm not talking like a really deep ditch. I'm talking like a shallow ditch, maybe a foot deep. Um, that seven feet should allow me to be able to at least make a six to 12 inch uh, deep ditch along the side of the driveway to, to help promote some better drainage. So this fence post here shoots straight back. You can't see the fence post. It's actually right behind the loader of the tractor. And we're cutting off quite a bit of the yard this way. You know, we are losing quite a bit of grass by making that cut. So it probably comes in, I'm gonna say at least 20, 25 feet that we're losing, uh, not the seven that we have here. Now, the reason for that is I've got all my equipment parked over here, and then I've got this bank barn right behind us. So having a little bit of grassy area on this corner is really gonna help me be able to back equipment in or back wagons into that barn as well. So. I am losing a little bit of the grass here, cutting this corner, you know, but in the end, I think I'm gonna appreciate it once I'm moving equipment around. So going the other direction, it goes straight down the driveway. And then once it gets down there where the truck is, it's gonna go straight across in front of the white barn. So on the west side, 
there's an old fence line here. You can see all the old trees, and there's a fence that's grown. The trees have grown through that fence, and I think the first time I go to use this, I'm going to probably try to throw some patches in here where there's some openings, and try to just maybe throw in a couple short pieces of fence and put the steers in here, and, and hopefully that'll keep them in. But once um, once they graze this down and they move back to the other pasture, we'll start tearing this fence out, and we'll start tearing the old fence out. We'll start clearing some of these trees and start running a whole new fence line on this west side. And eventually after that, once this is all done, hopefully next year, on the other side of there, on the other side of that, there's 12 acre field that we rent out, and hopefully next year we will we'll take that back, we'll fence it in, and we're gonna turn that into pasture as well. And then this will just be more of a feedlot connected to the main pasture out there. So that's all the fence posts I plan on putting in today. I will come back tomorrow, I'm gonna to put in some more posts, and then I'm gonna start building the H braces off of those, and then hopefully by the end of the week, we can finally start stretching some fence out here. But uh, I wanted to show you one other thing. This is a grain cart, I picked this up at auction, and this is a future project. So if you watch Pete over at Just a Few Acres Farm, I think he has like three of these, and he's got them where there's a, a roof built over them and it's tarped, and he fills those up with feed so he can feed his animals, feed his chickens, his pigs. And um, I wanna do the same thing. I need some kind of bulk grain storage and this is the cheapest solution that I've come up with. Uh, so it needs some repairs. I need to actually fix the metal on it first. There's a couple holes. And then I need to build a roof on it, get a tarp, and then I plan on buying bulk grain and I'll probably use the feed mill over at St. Marie that we visited last year. So they, they deliver bulk feed and I'd, I'd like to get two of these where that uh, I can have two types of feed stored. And that's, that's kind of the plan. Right now I, f I store everything in 55 gallon drums and four of those will store about a thousand pounds, somewhere in there. And uh, I'd really be liking to buy 2,000 pounds, a whole ton at a time if I can. And I think this is gonna allow me to do that. And hopefully I can pick up a second one if I can find one at auction cheap enough. But yep, that's a future project coming up. Uh, don't know when I'm gonna have time to do it, but hopefully I'll do that here pretty soon because we will have, we'll be getting pigs here in a few weeks. So I think that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.